What's going on guys, TJ here. Welcome back to the channel. Today's going to be another DIY episode. I'm going to teach you guys how to build your very own set of kayak stands. They're heavy duty, lightweight, and they should last you a lifetime. Check it out. channel before I get into actually building these kayak stands we're gonna go over them and why I think they're the best ones you can have and it's the best ones I've actually seen the DIY type ones anyway these are very heavy duty they're very lightweight and they fold up and you can put them wherever you want so it's we're gonna end up with two of these and as you can see they're lightweight they fold up and you can just hang them on a the wall you can throw them in the back of your truck uh, they're going to be really cool for you to take camping with you if you go RV camping and you just want to get your kayak up off the ground. I'm going to try to keep this video kind of short and sweet for you guys. So if I don't cover something, just hit me up in the comment section and I'll respond to you and I'll let you know exactly how to do it. Or, or I'm going to try to be real thorough in this video, but I also don't want it to stretch out too long because it's a fairly simple build once you get all the cuts made. What I've done is I've already made all the cuts. And remember, what we're fixing to build here, you're gonna do it twice. I've already have one built to show you guys. So this is gonna be one kayak stand and then you're gonna have the other kayak stand. Now, in order for me to cut these, you're gonna to have to buy three 10 foot sticks of the two inch Schedule 40 PVC. Uh, three of them will do it. Just make sure you get all the measurements out right and you, you'll have a little bit left over, not much, so you don't want to mess up and cut, make a bad cut because then you might not end up with enough. You might have to go back and get another uh, 10 foot stick of it. But just remember, it's two inch PVC Schedule 40. You need three 10 footers. And what I've done is I've already cut them up. Now, what I've got here makes just one of these stands. So you're gonna have to make double of these cuts and you're gonna have double of these fixtures that I've got here in front of me. So what you're gonna have is you're gonna have four two foot sections. So I've got one, two, three, four. You're gonna need two 16 inch sections. So I've got two 16 inches right here. You're gonna need one four footer. You're gonna need one T. You're gonna cut a two and three quarter inch piece. You're gonna need five of these caps. You're gonna need two 90 degree elbows. These are all slip fixtures. There's no threads, no screws or anything. These all slide right onto the PVC, just like that. You're gonna need two 45 degree angle. These are all slip-ons, just like I said, everything here is slip-on. So you're gonna need two of these 45s. And then of course, you're gonna need some webbing. You're gonna need this. This is a piece of all thread that I cut down. This is nine inches. So you can buy two nine inch bolts, which will do both stands, because all this is is what holds your uh, stand together and makes it so it'll pivot. You can fold it and put it up but nine inches is the length you need. You can get away with buying a 10 inch bolt. But what I did is I just bought a, a big stick of 5 16 all thread and some 5 16 nuts and washers. And I just cut them down to nine inches and put a nut on both sides and washers on both sides. It worked out really well. And then all you're gonna need is some screws. I already had these here. These are just to screw the webbing down onto the top of the pipe, which we'll get to in just a second whenever we get into the build. And, and that's it. That's all you're going to need to build one of these stands. And you do this twice and you've got two stands. All right, I'm going to get all of this out of the way so we can build. We're going to build one section at a time. And let's see, we're going to do the, the T first, the T post that, that pivots this piece right here. I don't know if you can see it on frame right here. But it's, we're going to build that first leg with the T post first. So we're going to need the four foot section. We're going to need the two 16 inch pieces. We're going to need the T. And we're going to need three of these caps. Everything else we'll set to the side and it'll be used on the next section. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to build this T section right here. And uh, this is this stand is actually two separate pieces that we're going to bolt together. So we're going to build one side at a time. So the first one we're going to build is going to be the T one. Now I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do any gluing in this video. 
but all you have to do is buy the PVC glue if you want it all glued together. I do suggest that you glue it. The only reason I'm not gluing it is because I'm, I'm making the video kind of quick and I don't want to have to wait on the glue to dry and all of this other stuff. So we're just going to put everything together and make sure you just, add, after you get yours put together, you can go back and kind of twist off, tweak everything exactly how you want it and then glue it up and it should be good to go. But for now, for the video purpose, we're just going to put everything together without glue so that you see exactly how to assemble it. So for the first tee, you're going to need your two 16 inch pieces. You're going to need your tee and you're going to need three caps and a four foot, your, that four foot section that you cut off. And this goes together so easy. So you're going to put cap on one end, the T, and then your two 16 inch pieces. And then at the end of those, we're just going to stick the caps on, just like that. That is it right there. That is That makes your first leg. Now we will have to go, and I'll show you when we assemble the two halves together, we will have to be drilling a hole through this to make the bolt go, for the bolt to go through and you know it makes that pivot point for her. But well, now we're gonna just set this one to the side and we're gonna make the other half. For this side, we're gonna have our four two-footers. have our 45 degrees, two of them. We're gonna have two of our 90 degree elbows. We're gonna have that short piece that we cut is two inches and three, two and three quarter inches. We gotta make sure you have that. And we're gonna have two caps. Take two of your two footers, go ahead and put caps on either end. And this is gonna be our legs that go out. And they're gonna go out like this right here. So we're building from the floor up. This is the floors down here. We're coming back up this way. Then we're gonna use our 45s. And remember, I'm not gluing anything right now. I'm just kind of bumping it all into place for the video. So once you have those two, there's your two 45s. You're gonna put on your next two two footers and let's, let's see I'm gonna flip these over so you guys can see everything so we've already got the legs at the bottom now you should be able to see that in if I can do this here for you all right so on this end you've got that piece that's two and three quarter inches and you've got your two 90 degree elbows. You're gonna put your 90 degree elbows on the end of your two footers. And then this is just gonna go right inside here. And when you put these together, it'll actually shut and meet. You see how that just shut down right in the middle? And these two meet because this is exactly two and three quarter inches. So that pipe's gonna take up until they touch. Because we want that gap for when we put our two pairs together and we gotta have a make sure, we got a big enough gap right here for our other leg to go through the center so we can put our bolt through. And it's a good idea to lay this down flat when you get it made, just the same way with your T. Lay it down flat and get everything pushed down because you don't want it cocked up to the side. The first one I built, I actually drilled the hole through and I didn't flatten it out all the way. So it's kinda, it kinda sits a little cattywampus, but it still works just fine. But this one, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure everything is flat. I'm gonna get a little rubber mallet. And you can just use a rubber mallet to kind of tap everything together. And that's the other leg. That's how simple that is. All right, so now once you get to this point, let me squat down so I can be in here with you. Once you get to this point, you're gonna have two pieces. You're gonna have your T, which is it's really hard for me to get this on camera, but there's the T, and then you got your other half. I don't know what we're gonna call it. It looks like a Y. Let's call it a T and a Y. Okay, 
the T, you're gonna take the T and from the top down, not from the, the crossbar side, but from the top down, you're gonna measure 28 inches from the end. And it's actually better to measure it without the cap on. So, let me put the cap on. You're gonna take a Sharpie and just measure 28 inches. And you, all you wanna do is make sure that you mark it where you can see it. All right, here's 28 inches. So I'm just gonna put a, a, a little mark around here. So when I put these together, I know that that's where 28 inches is. All right, so there's our 28 inch mark. Now I'm gonna put my cap back on the end. It's all the way flush down. Now just remember, you will be gluing yours, so it's always a good idea to rough fit it together like I'm doing anyway. Make sure everything is lined up exactly where you want it. And then I'll tell you another tip when you're building stuff out of PVC. Once you pre-fit everything like we're doing today without glue, and then you're gonna take it apart to glue it, draw you some lines just like this. So whenever you put it back together, the PVC glue, when you use PVC glue, it's meant, if you don't know how to use it or if you've never used it, you, you get the, the primer, which is a purple primer, and then you get the adhesive. Put your little bit of primer on there, it just primes it and cleans it really. And then you're gonna take and put the glue on the inside that you're gonna be putting the pipe into, or right into the fixture. The PVC glue is meant to be spun because what it does is it, it kind of heats up both ends and melts the PVC together and when you turn it, it actually melts it into one and it just creates one pipe. That's all it really does. It's not, it's not really glue, it actually just kind of melts the two pipes together. Anyway, that's just a tip. Just draw you some lines, straight lines around it so whenever you put it back together, you know that you're in the right spot. Alright, so I raised the camera up so you can see the next step. So we've got our T marked at 28 inches. We've got a mark that goes all the way around both sides so that we know where the 28 inches. The 28 inches, you're gonna line that up with the center of this little 90 degree spot right here. I don't know if you can see it really well. Let me see if I can put a dot on here for you. Okay, so you got the top of your 45 here. You got the bottom here and then you got the crack right here. That's the bend on your 45. You're going to want to put your hole right in between the crack and the top of this. So right in here somewhere is where you're going to want to put your hole. And your hole is also going to go through the T on the 28 inch mark, wherever that 28 inch mark is. It's where we're going to line everything up together and drill that hole straight through. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make sure that this piece is flat. I'm going to take the T off the table for now. We've got our 28 inch mark on that, so we know where the hole is going to go through there. It's going to go straight through the center on the 28 inch hole, on the 28 inch mark. And right here, this is the critical part. You want to make sure that you lay this Y piece down flat. Uh, and I'll show you what, what could happen. Let me sh I'll show you. Okay, you see how it's kind of cocked out right there? You see how it'll, it'll, it'll flop around? If we drilled those holes through this 45 right now and put the bolt through, these legs would never straighten up and the whole rack would be a little bit twisted. So that's why I'm saying to make sure that you get your little hammer or something, get all your fittings together and then lay it down flat and make sure everything is together tight before you drill your holes. Right, this one looks very flat so what I'm going to do is we're just going to drill a hole just like I said right in the center on that 45 and it's good to kind of put a line up that crack of the 45 and then put a line at the top and it helps your eyes kind of eyeball up exactly where you need to go and put you a dot. You want to be the center of your pipe going straight across so I'm going to, I'm going to put me a little dot there and make sure you hold your drill bit as straight as you can get it going across.
one side. I'm gonna flip it and do the same thing. When you're moving it around before you have your bolt in, make sure you're not doing a whole lot of twisting because it'll it'll unline your holes up. Unline, is that a word? Run it in and out a little bit and clean up the hole. Now we got the hole through the wire. Can't really see it. See how it twisted on me a little bit there? Make sure everything stays straight. And we're gonna set this to the side and drill our hole through the T. So now just make sure your T is flat, straight down. You're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna find that 28 inch mark you put on and you're gonna drill the hole straight across as level as you can get it. All right, we're gonna get our bolt. Alright, so that took a little bit of persuasion because when you're running the bolt through, it kind of the, the pipes don't want to line up just right, so it's kind of hard with just having two hands that, to line everything up. But I got it all lined up. Uh, you, then you just take and put your washer and your nut on and you tighten it down using a half inch ratchet or wrench or whatever you got. Now, we've got the leg put together now and it pivots just like it should. Everything's working great, so the next step is all we have to do now is add our webbing. I'm going to be adding this awesome Kayak USA webbing that my dad made for me. And for my stands, you're going to want a seven foot piece of webbing. And if you don't have webbing, I'll, I'll put some links to some good webbing uh, that would be really good to use for this. I'll put some links in the description of this video so you can go get you some. But if you've got an old set of ratchet straps, like, like these old ratchet straps, I've got a bag full of just ratchet straps. Uh, if you've got some old ratchet straps, you can actually just cut those to seven foot and use them just like you want. Yeah, just like I'm using this in the video right now. And other than that, we're just going to be using a Phillips head screw. And I've got these little latch screws. They're, they're one inch number eight uh, screws. And I'll put a link to these in the video description as well. But they're really just self-tapping self screws with a big, big washer head built onto the top so it holds the webbing onto the pipes for us. And we're just going to be using three of those screws. And let's cut us seven foot of our webbing. And when you're making these, you just make sure that you are cutting the right amount of webbing for each stand so that your stands match on each end. I mean, if you're off a little bit, it's not going to matter. But if you're picky like I am, you're going to want it to be exact. So I'm going to measure this one more time. make sure that I have seven foot. Six, seven foot, all right. So we have our seven foot of webbing. We've got three of those screws out. They're self-tapping. They got the big washer head on top so it'll hold the fabric down a little bit easier. You just don't want a regular screw with a little head on it because it can just go right through the webbing or the webbing can pull right over it. As long as you got something with a big round flat surface to pinch down when you screw it down, you'll be fine. Let me get my drill. And get you a small drill bit. I think this is a, this is like a 332. I know you can't see it, it's just a tiny drill bit. And all, all we're doing with this is using it for the pilot holes. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our seven foot of webbing, remember it's seven foot, and we're just gonna loop it around this end of this Y right here. We're gonna loop it right around it, and then we're gonna meet the two ends together. And these two ends are gonna fold up to the cap on the other end of the, the, the T that we've got here. So let's see if I can do all this on camera for you. So you wanna take, make sure your webbing is not twisted, make sure they're straight across. 
Make sure you're center of the cap. And we are going to drill a pilot hole first with our little 764th drill bit that we got or 630 or whatever it is. I said, and I'm just gonna drill a hole straight to the center. And if you do this, it'll make life a lot easier because if you try to just drill these screws straight through, it'll grab the webbing and just twist up on you and become a pain in the butt. It's probably still gonna do that a little bit, but it's not as bad once you drill the pilot hole. Then we're just gonna make sure everything's straight. See that there? Oh, got to focus. I'm sorry. This light is killing me. All right, so there's our first one. We're gonna come down about right here and drill our next one. Just like that. Try not to lose your spot. There's that one, it's in there. And then I'm just gonna put one more right above this one. And all these are is just for security to hold this webbing down on one end. And that's, and that's it. We got the three screws in here. Give you a little close up. That's all it looks like right there. Just three screws. Oh, I'll focus it for you some too. Okay, three screws through the webbing, the webbing's flush, it's at the end of the cap. This end is just draped over the top of this and hooked. That's all it does on that end. And that is really it for putting these together. Now, of course, you're gonna wanna glue it. And the really cool thing about this is, is you can paint them up, you can uh, get some of that different kind of camo duct tape that they sell, and once you've got it all put together and glued, you can wrap it up and however you wanna do it. But it's, it's not going to go bad. It's PVC. It's not going to rot. This is really sturdy stuff. Uh, I'm going to put this on the ground and get all this stuff out of the way. I'm going to throw a kayak on it and show you exactly how these things work and how well they are. I figure before we throw the kayak on there, I'll give you guys a good walk around so you can see what they look like without a kayak on them. As you can see, here's where we put the three screws in the end cap. Sorry about the focus. This DSLR just does not want to focus good in this garage. And we got our 290s up here. We got our 245s there. Our T down on the bottom. And then the rest is just caps. And we just got a matching set. Same thing over here. Our webbing goes right across the top. Speaking of webbing, look how good that webbing looks. And that's how they look. That is a a set of heavy duty DIY kayak stands. Kayak's not exactly in the center of the cradle, but you see it just hugs the bottom of the kayak. Just like that. All right guys, so that is how I build my kayak stands. I hope this video helps you out a lot. If you do like it, make sure you hit that thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you guys in the next one.